I'm here with spinal neurosurgeon Dr. Robert Bray from Disc Sports and Spine Center here in Los Angeles, California, along with his patient, Ken. Thank you both for joining us. Yes, thank you. So the big question to you is, Ken, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling really good. The surgery was uh, just a little, just a week ago. A week ago? Wow, and, you look great. Um, I'm up doing all my regular stuff, taking my son to school and those kind of things. I'm itching to get back in the pool and back on the bike, but... Um, Dr. Bray says I got to wait. Hold your horses there. It's only Easy. been a week. It's been a week since <laughs> spine surgery. Yeah. So let's, we've never talked about tethered cord before on the show. Is this more common than we realize? You know, tethered cord in an adult is relatively a new diagnosis. We didn't really find out much about it until the 70s and 80s with the advent of MRI scans. Before that, it was known about in children mm -hmm. from tumors. But in adults, not a, not a lot was known. And a lot of people will wonder, Dr. Lisa, what is this? How does it happen? And I, I believe you're going to show us exactly how this can happen. Absolutely in right. The womb. And Dr. Bray is right. Usually we pick this up in children because it's associated with spina bifida, a defect in the, um, the spinal cord. And a lot of times we'll see dimples and tumors and things like that. But let me show you, yes, how it starts um, in the womb. So we have a pregnant woman here. And basically the spinal cord, the whole central nervous system starts um, within the first month, actually the first couple of weeks with different layers and you will actually see folding in um, at, the, at the fetus level and there will be a, neur a neural tube and that's when we talk about neural tube defects and the spinal cord develops and the vertebrae sort of around this with these uh, uh, things we call somites. They, they, they develop the, um, the, the spinal cord here and as you can see the spinal cord is free flowing there in this baby which is exactly how we want it and as a child develops you go from sort of a C curve to an S curve and see how the spine curves, that's why you want it free because it has to move with the spine as well. So this is how it would normally develop. And here you see it, the um, spinal cord is up higher, whereas if it's tethered, it's pulled down. And this can be from um, not only from, uh, you know, neural tube defects, but also from um, injuries, previous surgery. If you have fatty tissue that can, you know, cause it to adhese, basically some reason it's adhesed here and it's pulled down, which restricts movement, can cause um, motor and sensory disorders and things like that. You know, Lisa, that's exactly true, that tethered just applies to the fact that it's pinned down. Mm -hmm. And that can be from a whole host of things. In children, right. many times defects, tumors, they have skin manifestations. Mm -hmm. In adults, it often goes unrecognized and it's this small tail internally right. it's called the phylum terminalis. Yeah. And that's what Ken had, this persistent tether or rope on the end of his spinal cord. Let's show everyone with this demo, you know, in a quick and dirty fashion, what you were doing in this surgery. I'll help you out because, you know, you're, go ahead and hold it up here. Okay. I'm going I'm to pull it down, act like the spine is, the, the spinal cord is tethered. So if this was the brain and this was inside the spinal cord, it would be all the way down. And it would have spinal cord, which is supposed to be ending at the mid, the lower part of the chest. In Ken's case, his spinal cord was pulled all the way down to L3. Well, we don't want to touch the spinal cord, so we go in with our micro scissors, which actually the micro scissors are the size, the size of the head of a pin. But we go in way down low between the bones and literally just cut the end of the spinal. And that's what you see in that video is the release of that phylum or that end and the spinal cord rides free, mm -hmm. so we can ride up where it belongs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the, the results could be nearly instantaneous as far as the improvement as seems like you've seen. Yeah, I, the wound is still healing a little bit, but uh, I'm already feeling better. Classic example Classic. of pain that may, may not be what you think. Dr. Bray, thank you so much for being here. Thanks Thank so you. Lisa, Continued thank you. recovery and best and wishes to you. And the last thing is that um, the number one thing that women can do to try and prevent neur neural tube dis disorders, folic acid. Yeah. And, and vitamins so, and health. Yeah, yeah, vitamins and health. That's a great point.